Hi, I'm Pastor Diane. Welcome to this time of worship. I invite you to have several things with you for this time of worship. Something to drink, something to eat. We're going to have a blessing for uh, the food. So please feel free to have something to eat and drink with you. Also, your worry stone. And you can see I've put a heart on mine with a sticker. Maybe you've done it with a marker or some paint or something. Have that with you. Also, a lighted candle. We'll be using that during worship. And then a page with some heart shapes. Uh, and if you don't have a page that has hearts already written on it like this, you could uh, just have a blank piece of paper with the opportunity to draw a heart. The idea is that, especially for children, but anybody could do it, every time you hear the word heart during the worship service, you color in a heart. So friends, we have gathered with food to nourish our bodies, even as we nourish our souls together in worship. This is very much what our spiritual ancestors did as they gathered in those early days in houses. They would bring what they had and share with each other. It's no wonder that potluck is in our Christian DNA. I invite us to share this prayer and repeat each line after me. Holy Peace Giver, we gather in your name invited by Jesus bound together with your spirit in union with each other feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. And now I invite you to pick up something from the table and let us say the one word that is at the heart of the matter in every blessing we say at our tables. Namely, grateful. Go ahead and break bread while we break open the word and break open our hearts to God. Easter is not just a day. It is a whole season of time when we remember that Jesus' spirit lives in each one of us. In the Bible, the early church was described in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. So over the next few weeks, we are following our ancestors' traditions. We are creating a temple of worship in our hearts, whether we can be physically together or not, by sharing in words and music and breathing and eating together, we will stay connected. The earliest Christians worshipped in their homes before they had church buildings, and so will we until we can meet together again in our sanctuary. Because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the Spirit that makes us one in love. It is this connection that makes this time at home a struggle. I want to be together with you in person, in worship. I want to hear the band and the choir. I want to hear the piano and the organ. I want to enjoy the Holy Spirit atmosphere in the church building, and especially I want to be able to greet you at the church door. What makes this time even more heart-wrenching is that because of my retirement this summer, 
we have a limited number of weeks left together. Currently, our guidance is that we will be home through May the 9th, but that directive may change. Will we be able to gather before you receive your new pastor? We don't know. And that is what we know. You are in my prayers, and I ask you please to pray for me. For now, we go on with our new method of worship. So let's center our hearts as one, taking a deep breath together, in through the nose, out through the mouth. I invite you to place your hand on your heart, and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Let me offer this prayer. Holy, living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Hear this assurance from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and calm and center here. You're mine. Secure and free. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to take another breath. Make sure your shoulders are loose. Any tension you might feel anywhere in your body, let that go. And let's breathe in and out. One more time. In and out. Let's pick up our heart stone. Of course, sometimes it's called a worry stone because we can rub on it as we're worried about something. Let our touch on the surface of this stone remind us that God's touch is within us around us and always with us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now is how close God's love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer now Our worries, fears, and strife We turn to you and know you're near Your light, our love, and life I invite you to take this worry stone, this heart stone, and lay it at the feet of your candle, which reminds us that the light of Christ is always with us. This week we read a passage from the account of the Acts of the Apostles. It's a wonderful encouragement and reminder that death never is the last word. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip, since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me. 
Because he is at my right hand, I won't be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope, because you won't abandon me to the grave, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. The David referred to in this passage is David the psalmist, who became King David, and the quote is from the 16th Psalm. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because God is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful followers see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence, it's total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. It may feel odd to have moved into the season of Easter, a season of celebration in the midst of these difficult times. Perhaps it is an opportunity to really take into consideration that at the heart of our Christian faith, we are called to live our lives in the belief that death is not the final word. This is why Christians are called Easter people. The tomb becomes the womb of new life. What would we do differently if we really believed that we are loved beyond all endings, that there was nothing to fear? Today we imagine Jesus at our right hand, counseling us throughout our days with these words, Peace be with you. This is what he did when he appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. They were in a locked room, fearing for their lives. Sound familiar? Let's let Jesus speak these words to us as well. Here is how the story from the Gospel of John goes. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Two things Jesus wanted the disciples to have in their moment of fear were peace and the Spirit. Taking a breather is one way to see what Jesus offered to them. He wanted them to take his breath so that they would feel his spirit living in them. I invite you to lean over and whisper towards someone, Peace be with you. If you have several people around the table, let it go around like when you play telephone and you pass it from one person to the next. If you're alone, you might text someone right now that you'd want to share this message with of peace be with you. Or if you don't usually text, plan to call when this worship service is over and share this message of peace with someone. Our theme scripture says they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. One way we can be glad and generous is to share about how we are finding strength, hope, love and peace in these days. 
This is part of breaking bread with each other as we break open our hearts to one another as well. This week, since Jesus said he wants us to feel peace, let's talk about peace. Think about what sights, sounds, words, and actions are things that act in your life as a voice in your ear saying, Peace be with you. For example, the sight of trees, hearing birds chirping, reading scripture, taking a walk. When have you felt peace this week? Or if you haven't experienced much peace, what do you have in your memory as something that brings you peace? Let's complete this sentence. I see peace in blank. Or I see peace when blank. Or I see peace where blank. I invite you to speak your answer out loud, whether or not anyone else is there with you. Or journal your answer. Or share it with someone later in the day in a phone call or video chat. Let's speak right now. I see peace in, when, or where. It's difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. Take a moment and say out loud the names of people you wish were right there next to you at your table today. For as we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we don't know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those who are afraid, let us pray. O oh God, all of these persons we lift to your loving care. Amen. On this Native American Ministry Sunday, we celebrate the many contributions of Native Americans to the United Methodist Church. So let us pray on a special prayer on this Native American Ministry Sunday. Thank you, God, for this day to celebrate and support Native American ministries. Continue to bless Native Americans who are called to be pastors and the churches who are in ministry alongside them. Fill all of your churches with your love. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Let us take another breath of spirit in and out. We know that God hears our prayers and the spirit, the breath of God, is blowing from within us outward as a spirit of compassion in presence. Now it's time to praise God and let's use an energetic affirmation repeating after me. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise for we are Easter people. Alleluia, Amen.
That was great. Well, we have our energy up. Let's decide to send some energy out to the world that needs it. Let me invite you to make a financial gift to the ministry of your church using the online giving button on our website. You can contribute in that same place to today's special offering for Native American Ministries. Thank you. If you have a financial need, please contact me. That can also be done through our website, and we may be able to assist you. Another good resource is the United Way Referral Line. Just call 211, that's 211 on your phone, or go to the United Way website. The address is 211unitedway.org. What message does the world need? Perhaps you will decide to create a way to let more and more people know the message of Christ, namely, you are not alone. I am here. Peace be with you. What can we do to create more peace in our household, in our family, in our relationships with those we cannot be with right now? How can we offer peace to those who are working so hard right now? How can we offer peace to those who feel no peace or comfort? Some of you are calling church members and friends to check on them. Some of you are making masks for medical workers and the general public. Some of you are praying for others, people both known and unknown to you. Some of you are deepening your relationship with God, readying yourself for God's next call to you. I pray that every one of us will find a way to share peace with another. Before we move to the benediction, I'd like to say a word about next week's online worship. We will celebrate Camp Sunday. I'll open the worship time with a blessing for whatever you're eating and drinking. Uh, we'll have a time to rub our worry stones and a time to light our candle and set that worry stone there at the base of the candle. Uh, children are invited to continue with the coloring in of hearts. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to the camping staff from the Minnesota and Dakota's conferences. They have prepared a worship time for us at camp. Hear now these words of blessing. As we close this time together, remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, whispering, Peace be with you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but in joy. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen.